Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to continue building up a database that we did in the last session. So in the last session, we created a simple table, called it customers, did a few records, did a query that looked for records matching up with leads, and we based a report on that just for leads. And then we created a main menu with one, one little button that ran a macro which basically opens a form, that customer's form there. Close that down, close that down. So what I want to do now is create a second table for products. So customers is there and then what products they might sell and then create a link in that table. So up to the top, create table design I'm going for, and then I'm going product ID as the primary key. So that's going to be a an auto number as well. So it's going to start with an auto number, but I want that to be a primary key, so it's unique. And then we'll have product name, quantity, QTY, and price. And then what I'll do is a calculated field here. So we'll have stock stock value so i'm going to tab across to that and type ca for calculated and that's going to open up the expression builder so what i'm going to do here is there's the table all the features there you've got nothing sitting there for me to see so what i need to do is type this out so basically i want to whatever the quantity is times the price so if I do that, square bracket QTY times square bracket price, close the square bracket. So quantity times price, click OK. It sits it down here at the bottom and you can check whether that's going to work in a second. But basically what I need to do now is I need to add the foreign field from the customer so I can have a link between customers and product. So I want customer ID, which needs to be a number field, but not auto number, and it's not duplicate. It can be duplicated, so it's not unique. Okay, I've left price on text. I want that on cal uh, currency. So it's on currency, calculated field. You've got to do that um, down the bottom there, format. Get on the sales. Oh, you're going to get on the right one. So format there, get in there. Select currency for that. Okay, now I can have a look. I've added some records so you can see it working. Now I'll just add um, another Excel transaction so you can see it. Quantity five. Calculation field works as soon as I do the figure there. It's all in pounds. Now I've got a problem here with selecting the person so i'm just going to select number one again but i don't know who that number one is so i'm going to create a lookup there and i'm also going to create a lookup for these courses now two different lookups i'm going to do that lookup is going to look up at a table which i've already got this one is going to look up at a list that i'm going to type but i need to do it in design so first of all customers because that's already set up let's go for lookup down the bottom here if I go and select the combo box option, and then you have to select the table. It is on table, it is a table that you want to look at. So that's the table customers. And you want to, it's bound first column, the ID number, and I want to see four columns. And then you have to put column widths in there. I'm going to go two, two centimeters. And where it says auto, I'm going to put 10 centimeters. That's what I want, and I'll save that, and let's just check that that one works. So if I go to this one now, I should have a drop-down list there with the customers showing four columns, so I can see who each one of those is. That's that one. Now this one is going to be slightly different because I'm just going to, I'm going to type a list of products, um, go back into design and do that. So we go on to product name. It's still going to be a lookup down the bottom. Get in there, 
still going to be a combo box but where it's going to change is it's not a table i haven't got a table set up with courses on so i need to do a, a value list now when you do a value list you are typing the items so i am going to type excel and then you do um, excel and then you do a semicolon and type the next one semicolon type the next one and so on so i've got excel access word let's go for project semicolon visio that'll do or whatever now what's the difference between this and a table if this list is getting too big you probably need to create a table a lookup table and then that will work for you so there's only one column in this um needing to be shown here it's just going to show that list so if i save this have a look select it should show me that list it does now if you want to limit that to it to that list if i go back into design there is an option down here to limit to list and it's on no by default but if i change that to yes it means people can't add their own item it can only be one of those courses so if i save that and have a look so now if i do something else i click there so we're going to do a project course we're going to buy 12 of them at 25 pounds and it's going to be for customer bob it bob it so there you go pressing tab to put that in the database closing that down now what we haven't done is created a relationship so i need to create a relationship well i've actually created it but i'll go through it again let's go into database tools relationship i'll just delete that one off off so we start from scratch so save the fact that i've done that so you pull on the tables that you want to relate and then you go from the primary key in one table to the foreign key in another so you want one customer can buy many courses and you're looking for one to many now i always recommend that you tick this when you're setting up a database and force referential integrity because that will stop people creating a company in there a customer that doesn't exist in there which is good whether you tick these other two is up to you for example if you delete a customer and one of these is that's ticked it will delete all their transactions you might not want that so i'm just going to click on create that does the one to many link look saving that closing this window down now what i want to do is create a form that's going to look at both of these so at the moment if i open this one we've got a form which is just looking at customers which is okay if you're adding a new customer if i go now because i've done the relationship create form it will pull both of them together so you can see that all the transactions for this customer one is as listed there if i go on to the next person there are their courses and so on and so on so that's what i want so if you want if i come on to somebody who hasn't got a course like this guy this company now i'm in layout view there so i'll just go into form view so product name i'll go for there's my list i'll go for access i'll go for 10 courses and I'll put the price at 250 and then it gives you that stock value there what I need to do now is quickly save this let's close that down let's put an FRM in front of that form it's looking at the table customers and products like that there's my form now i can create a report based on sales general sales but i need to do a query so let's do a query for general sales so create query query design so what do i need to add i need to add customers and products i want the customer name people click that down i want the product name i want quantity price and stock value let's have a look at that so that should give me a list of 
all of these in total stock value. And if you want, you can add these things at the end there and do total sales. If you so wish. Saving that. ROI customer sales. So now I've got that query. Now what I want to do is create a report on that. Create a report. I'm going to use the report wizard because I want it to group them by customer. So I'm sending everything across. So customer, it's already picking that up and then each, each product that they've bought. I'll go next. And do I want to group by anything? Not really. I could put product name. But not really. Um, next, summary options you get just as big as and there's calculations in there. So you've got stock value. I might want to do a sum on that, maybe a percent. Okay. And then next is all about layout. I want it in landscape. Next, then I'm going RPT in front of all of that for report. Looking at the table customers, products. You don't have to name it like this, it's just something I like to do. Now when you click finish through this, it's going to truncate a lot of the stuff and that's always one of the frustrations, even though you try to get it to fit. So it has actually grouped it by customer, it's put all this analysis in there. But you can see at the end there, it's, a lot of it's truncated because there's a huge space allocated there. You can actually create this yourself and I'll do it on a different se uh, session, but I'll just go into design on this now and see if I can fix it a little bit. Going to design, I don't really want all that on there. That's a lot of waffle that's not needed. This is a big gap here, look, quantity. It's given that massive space when it's only a small figure. So if I bring that across, back over, and so it's in line with the label. And then maybe I can just then pull these over to come into view. And you can see the one at the end is the one that's truncate, uh, truncated. So if I get in that one, widen that a bit. The sales value, then you've got the labels at the top there, which is slightly down a bit, and then price like so. And then you've got these same thing, pull these in. I don't need that page number on there. You probably would have that on there. And then the, the report totals of this one at the bottom there, just pull that over. And then have a quick look, see what that looks like. So you can now see the percentage. So they probably need to come in a little bit more because they're very close to the edge there. So Bob IT's bought all these products. There's a the stock um, value. And you've got the price there at the end. So that's the wrong way around. The labels are the wrong way around. So that's the price and that's the stock value. So I need to go and swap that round. Stock value is on top of that one. And this is the price. It actually says it below. I didn't read it. But that's why you check things. And like I said already, I would probably do this manually myself. Let's have a look. Stock value. Yeah, I need to mess around with that a bit. Everything else is okay. Any additions. So if I go back into my database now and, and um, catch it, there's only got one course there. Let's go and see how this works. And this is how I, I go to my form, go to catch it. So I have to come forward to catch it. There it is. And uh, let's get them to do, I'll buy some extra courses. One Excel course, at £25, and then works that out. We'll do a project course. We'll do 10 of them. 100 pounds. And that works that out. We'll do one more Visio course. Five of them at 20 pounds. Tab off, tab off. There's now done loads of courses. Close this down. Run new report. So now Catch It IT has picked that up and you can see the information there. And all the figures are coming through. So that's how access works. You input the data, you generate reports. Reports are usually based on queries.
So that's all I want to talk about so far in this little session. So hopefully that's of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.